work-life balance expert and author of the book, How to Diffuse the Landmines We Plant in Our Lives. Kelly Aceta joins me on the Newsmakers Line. Kelly, Happy New Year. Welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me, Jeff, and Happy New Year to you. So what do you think, Kelly? Do you think these resolutions are effective or we shouldn't bother? What do you think? Well, the problem with resolutions is they're just too broad. You, you, you know, people say, I'm going to lose weight, I'm going to make more money. It, it's just your brain doesn't know what to do with that. So as opposed to resolutions this year, I really encourage people to set goals because goals are way more specific. You have to have a timeline. You have to have exactly what's going to happen. And then you can work backwards and create a map of small little road road signs and little bite-sized chunks that you can see progress on a, on a smaller scale, which will build your confidence to get to the end of that finish line. Okay, so I had a very general resolution, Kelly, which was eat more grilled cheese sandwiches. So what I'm doing now is I'm <laughs> charting in January that normally in a month I eat three grilled cheese sandwiches, maybe bump that up to five and gradually go up from there. So good advice. Good advice. Now, in all seriousness, though, Kelly, is there an issue with really putting such a big emphasis on yearly resolutions? We're starting the year out. We all start doing it. Maybe we haven't been thinking about this for the past three months. Is is there a lot of pressure on we're putting on ourselves if it's, uh, you know, it's, it's the beginning of the year and we just start talking about all these changes we want to make? Well, there's just something about a new beginning, and that's what we feel when the, when we go to a new year. And I encourage you, all your listeners, you have 365 days to make a difference in your life. So look at the six areas of your life, social, financial, physical, mental, spiritual, emotional. What area is out of balance? Just pick one and just do something to move forward on on bringing that part of your life back into balance maybe social you're completely out of whack you're a workaholic and you you don't spend any time having fun go out once a week make that a goal or if you want to make more money um you want to sit down and you want to plan out what are you going to do to make more money how much money by what time uh as a matter of fact jeff i put together a resource a uh, free resource for all your listeners and um, a game plan and a strategy and a script to go out and make more money in 2020 if they would like to. Um, it's at landmineproject.com. But you've got to have a plan. And that's what's so important. And the C word. You've got to be consistent. Well, and Kelly, I was going to ask you, but you've really addressed this question. Like, it seems to me like the biggest challenge is if you set a big goal at the beginning of the year, you get to July. Oh, man, this is such a long year. I I don't want to continue with this anymore. It sounds like if you're very specific and you've got a timeline, that's the way to tackle it over time. Am I right about that? You're absolutely right. And as a matter of fact, unfortunately, most people don't make it even close to July. They, uh, the study just came out and said that 25% of us are still working on our goals after January yeah. 30th. And of that, only about 8% actually follows through. So exactly. You want to have, you just don't, you can't give your, your brain this big project to do. Uh, it just, you'll give up way too soon. So having those specific goals and understanding uh, Rome was not built in a day. You can't expect instant results. And I know we're the land of Insta people. We tap our foot when our foot is, when our food is in the microwave. Right. <laughs> We've got to be able to look a little bit long term and, and give ourselves time, you know, 90 days for a specific small bite sized goal. And maybe with losing weight, maybe it's not pounds. Maybe it's just removing one thing a month out of your diet that, that keeps you from achieving the health that you want. Maybe January, you remove sugar, and then February, you remove uh, the bad carbs, and then uh, alcohol. You know, just all the different things that might be contributing to your weight gain. Uh, and then add in exercise. Okay, by April, I'm going to work out. I'm going to go walking twice a week. And make sure you put it in your calendar. If you don't plan and put 
specifically when you're going to do these things, it's not going to happen. Yeah, Kelly, that's what I was thinking as you were saying all of this, that you really have to have it in front of you, not in your brain, right? You really have to have it, say, on a yes. Google calendar and say, am I hitting that goal every day? It's got to be visible to you, doesn't it? Absolutely. And also, if you can make it public, that's even more helpful because then you have people holding you accountable. Yeah, It hurts. <laughs> it's very effective so uh you know you want to post your goal on facebook uh go for it you know you'll have a whole bunch of people cheering you on that is kelly is a work-life balance expert her book is called how to diffuse the landmines we plant in our lives she's a great friend of this program kelly i look forward to talking to you again in 2020 have a great new year happy new year to you jeff and thanks so much for having me on